Adho Mukha Svanasana, the downward facing dog pose, is a timeless teacher, usefully introduced to beginning students. As long as one practices, as long as you come back to this pose, you'll find a deep well of inspiration and inner learning. This pose, as with all, we want to build from a strong foundation. Here, the fingers spread wide, the thumbs not quite so wide. And we want to create a feeling as though pressing all the air out from under the palms by rooting the knuckles of the index fingers more firmly down, thereby equalizing the pressure across the entire span of the palms, and as you bring weight onto the hands, equalizing the pressure through the wrist joints. Maintaining that firm rooting, we curl the toes under. And with an inhalation, I'll ask Debbie to shift her pelvis forward to gaze forward or up, and exhale to lift up and back in a downward facing dog pose. And pressing way back, most students here will tend to collapse the chest to the floor as far as they possibly can. And students who are really open to the shoulder girdle, this is problematic. We don't want to hang in the shoulders in this way. Instead, we want to try to do, while well, continuing to move firmly through the palms and press the arms straight, we want to spiral the shoulders out broadly away from the spine and then draw the lower front ribs in away from the skin so we cultivate a nice straight line from wrist to elbow to shoulder to the hips. Placing your hand on a student's back, a student who tends to collapse in the chest and shoulders, and asking that student to bring pressure up against your hand will help them to get that uh, nice line of energy from the hands out to the hips and sitting bones. And again, from there, spiraling the shoulder blades out broadly away from the spine, creating more space across both the upper back and the chest, while keeping the shoulder blades rooted firmly down and against the back ribs. To accentuate the rooting of the knuckles of the index fingers, ask your students to spiral the inner forearms energetically towards the floor while maintaining that active spiral of the shoulder blades out broadly away from the spine. Looking at the feet as the other foundation of the pose, we want to cultivate Padabandha. And here in Adho Mukha Svanasana, first ask your students to lift the heels as high as possible to root down then from there more firmly to the inner edges of the balls of the feet, which will help them to awaken, to lift the inner arches. Then ask your student to stretch the heels towards the floor, but only so far as they don't lose that lifting of the inner arches and ankles. If it's difficult for a student to get the heels to the floor, it's okay. It's an opportunity to stretch a little bit farther. A student can also take the feet much wider apart, and with that, find greater ease in rotating the pelvis anteriorly, and from there, more ease in revolving the inner thighs back. In adjusting this pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana, position yourself symmetrically to the student rather than trying to adjust from the side. This will also allow you to more easily see the symmetry of the pose or the asymmetry of their position in the pose and be able to work with them in refining that alignment. The basic adjustment is to place the hands around the hips with the thumbs and sacrum and the direction of pressure is the line of energy they're cultivating out to the sitting bones. How are you doing? Beautiful. And so from here, either squatting or standing and straddling, use your strength of your legs, pressing through your feet to encourage with your hands on their hips, more length of the spine and length into the arms and shoulders. Meanwhile, with the legs active, firming the thighs, over time, if you, as soon as open to the hips, the feet come closer together in line with the hips or slightly closer together from there. Adjusting from here, you can step forward with your, again, your hands to the hips to pull the hips up and back or crossing the, el the, um, the wrists over, release your arms, draw your arms between your student's thighs and clasping the thighs, pulling back the internally rotate thighs to encourage them to press their thighs back towards the back to draw more length to the spine. With active legs and firm thighs, the kneecaps are lifting, inner thighs are spiraling back. And by activating the legs even more and pressing the tops of the femurs back, the student will find more length in the spine. And then taking one more breath in here, I'll ask Debbie to release that onto her knees and rest in child's pose.